President Trump making his second visit to the Gulf Coast in less than a week. He'll be shaking a lot of hands, but you can bet the mainstream media won't be giving him a fair shake. Take a look at how they covered his visit on Tuesday. Accusing him of focusing on himself, showing no empathy, someone here says, instead of criticizing in the wake of disaster, the media should be trying to bring the country together. Well, hi everybody, I'm Lauren Simonetti. Welcome to Cashin' In. Our Cashin' In crew this week, Rachel Campos Duffy, Juan Williams, Larry Glazier, and Scott Martin. Welcome everybody to the show. Thank you. All right, Rachel, we begin with you. The media still attacking President Trump even as America deals with the tragedy in Texas and Louisiana. What do you make of that? Well, look, when you have a tra tragedy of this proportion, what you want from your president is competence and you want authenticity. Not everybody is a hugger, not everyone is in a motor. And I think part of the reason why we're having all this hug counting, you know, how many hugs he gave or didn't give, or why we have silly discussions about whether the first lady can wear stilettos on our way up, uh, you know, onto Air Force One or not, is because I think that he's pretty much handling this very well. I think there were plans in the media um, for stories about how he dropped the ball and, and mishandled his first big crisis. This is a huge flood, a huge natural disaster, and things are going as well as you could hope for. Um, Rachel, they also, you say the, the word huge, they criticized him, the mainstream media, for, you know, saying the storm was epic and horrific. What other words would you use to describe it? It just seems so weird. Juan, let me bring you in here. Um, you know, I personally don't care about Melania's heels, and I, I'm also questioning the fact that the media asked a lot of questions about the $1 million personal donation that the president was making to the victims. What's so wrong with that, or, or why question it so much? Oh, because the president has a history of saying that he's making donations to philanthropic efforts only to later be found out, as it was during the 2016 campaign, that some of the money did not go. In fact, lots of the money didn't go anywhere but into his personal businesses and even into a, I think it was like a six foot tall painting of himself down in Mar-a-Lago or something like that. So I mean, people just, you know, checking say, hey, given his history, is he really making a donation? But I think the bigger issue here is, you know what? You think back to President Bush standing there after 9-11 and saying, we hear you, letting people understand the importance of the government and the government's going to be their protector. And I think that's why you look at uh, Obama after Charles, uh, Charleston and the shooting down there, again, you know, singing Amazing Grace. I think it, it's easy to say, you know, we don't want somebody who's less than competent and uh, we have to give praise to the government. It seems so far they've been doing a good job. But oftentimes the role of the president, the leader of our country, is to show that he's connected, has some heart and feeling. And so you can say, oh, it's the mean old media, but guess what? Uh, you know what? He didn't go and any touch, much less hug, any of the people who were directly impacted by this terrible flood. And maybe he'll do that today. He responded very quickly. On Friday, Hurricane Harvey struck. On Tuesday, he was down there. So the response time w was very quick right now. Um, I have heard the rallying call, Scott. I, I have. He, he is instilling confidence. We're going to help you. We're going to get you your money. We're going to get you your aid. You're, are you hearing that from the president? Yeah. Lauren, Texas, we're with you. I mean, remember, yeah. Donald Trump is not your typical president. So to say that he's going to be like Obama, he's not doing thing like, like Bush did after 9-11 is crazy because he's already proven he's not like a typical president of past. So he's going to deal with this in his own way. And if you talk to uh, local officials, uh, Governor Abbott, everybody has said that this has been a great response from Washington. And they've been very proud of working with D.C. on this. And therefore, it's all good for me because if you look at the tapes, and look at the meetings Trump has had. He's engaged. He's talking to local officials, and he's trying to help. Yeah, you know, I, I'd have to agree with you. Larry, Larry, let me bring you in, because Scott made a point. He's not a politician. And when you respond to a crisis, a natural disaster, there's a fine line. You have to show empathy, um, and you have to get yourself involved, but, but you don't want to look to, there's just a certain way you have to seem. It, it's a hard thing to do, and he's an outsider to politics. Do you think he's doing a good job? You know, Lauren, uh, the media can criticize President Trump all they want. It's not going to put a roof over the head for the thousands of families that have been displaced in Texas. It's not a rallying cry. And at the end of the day, look, these families are struggling right now. He is going to be judged based on his leadership, not in the relief effort, but in the recovery and the rebuilding effort, how he directs infrastructure. It's going to take billions of dollars and years of leadership. That's ultimately going to be his legacy is how he deals with this after the fact, what he did or didn't do or what he wore or what it shouldn't have been, what 
he did. That's irrelevant, and it's a shortcoming, and it's the media just taking partisan pot shots when the president is vulnerable. Yeah, and you would think in a natural disaster that this would be the time to finally come together. But look, the media isn't just bashing the president. The media is also bashing Texans. We want to show you this cartoon from Politico. It's mocking, making fun of the people in Texas. Um, you see, you know, a man being saved by, by uh, the Coast Guard, but he goes, oh, no, because Texas is a red state, uh, believe in small government, it has to be God saving them, not, not the Coast Guard. Uh, is this necessary, Rachel, a cartoon like this? No, this just shows the kind of disdain that so many liberals have for religious people and also their ignorance. I mean, uh, you know, the idea is that there's, you know, these o only white people in Texas, uh, it's a very diverse state, and um, this kind of disdain, I think makes more people run into the arms of Donald Trump because Donald Trump may be a mogul and a billionaire from from uh, Manhattan, but he is somebody who has never looked down on the religious right, never mocked them, and I think he was rewarded electorally um, not just by the religious right, but by many fair-minded Americans who are just good um, good people and think that uh, religion has a place in our country and certainly isn't um, something that should be mocked. What's interesting about that cartoon one is that Houston uh, voted for Hillary Clinton. Absolutely. I, I think Houston's almost half Hispanic and, and went strongly uh, blue city. But I think that, you know, what that cartoon does suggest to me is that you hear all this rhetoric coming out of Texas about, you know, let's secede. And guess what? You know, we want small government. We don't trust the federal government. Guess who's there helping? It's us, the American people, Why? in the form of our government. And let me just quickly add, Rachel, mm. that when you think about the Trump budget, on issues like flood insurance. We're talking here on cashing in. Flood insurance, guess what? They don't want to do it. How about, community development, block, how about community development block grants to help with the recovery? Guess what? Listen, first of all, Republicans, conservatives who are for limited government, this is precisely the kind of things they want the government for. They want the government out of their, uh, you know, doctor's offices. They don't want the government to tell them how much salt or soda pop they should drink. Um, but th this is the kind of thing, th this is the kind of thing that government should do and is the only place that government, uh, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to coordinate one, something like this with just private, private one, enterprises. Texas is a Texas is a proud state, too, guys. I mean, the budget surplus they have, they've That's got right. money to spend on the recovery effort. They can stand on this on their own, but they're going to get help from the federal government, as they should. But Texas is a great state. It's strong. It's got a great economy. That's why they feel like they can handle a lot of things on their own. They should feel that way. The Texas economy you know, Scott, Scott is a tenth a great of... Point here, and I think you know, one of the things we recognize is this political satire is in such bad taste. You don't kick people when they're down. The president is fair game. He ran for political office. But when Texans are down on their luck they're struggling you write a satirical cartoon i mean it's in such bad taste that's why the divide is so big in this country because of these unpleasant pot shots that happen so we've seen nothing all week of neighbor helping neighbor stranger helping stranger in texas and then you see this cartoon where politics is completely blinding us to humanity right now larry I'll let you respond you know, it, to it, that. It's politics. It, 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 is, it is politics as usual. And again, this is supposed to be that unity moment where we all come together and help one another. And instead, you get people uh, exacerbating the divide in this country. And I think you know, this is where leadership makes a difference. We need to change that dialogue in Washington and bring everyone together to help one another, help Americans. That's what we do so well. And I think that's what this is an opportunity for. Yeah, which is making a lot of people angry uh, on both sides, I have to say, about that Politico cartoon that we just showed you. All right, coming up, well, the president's called to unite the country after after Hurricane Harvey, unite Congress to pass tax reform.